What's going on guys? Hope you're all having a great day. Ignore this piece of hair. I don't know how to wear hats. We're back here at the Commerce playing a uh, 2040 Hold'em. Last time we played here, it went well. I'm gonna go back to where I can win because this is part of the uh, bankroll challenge. So uh, a little bit in the negative update here. This is the third episode of this bankroll challenge. I am currently down $21,000-ish, give or take. This hair is really obnoxious. I don't know why I didn't fix this. Anyways, currently down 21,000. Got some, need some work to do, but we're gonna hop in there. It's a beautiful day in LA. Look at this, look at this sunset. Palm trees, sunset. I should probably move here. Anyways, gonna play some poker. Let's run it up. Let's play some 10, 20, 40 here at the Commerce. I buy in for $20,000 to start, and right off the bat, we have a hand to play. With ace, deuce of diamonds in the cutoff, I raise things up to 100 bucks. Get the button to immediately 3-bet me to 350, and action folds to me. Hmm, out of position against the button, 3-bet, you know, late position versus late position. He certainly could be wide, so... You know, I'm trying to get a little spicy right off the bat. You know, I think literally this is my second hand that I've seen since I've sat down. I'm going to put in a four bet here, try to bluff with a wheel ace to $1,100. We're playing pretty deep, so there's definitely plenty more to play for if he calls, and that's what he does. So he does make the call, and we're going to see a flop, and the flop's going to come jack-10-6 rainbow with one diamond. Overall, this is not the best-looking flop for me, so... I decided between checking and betting here, I think my opponent is going to have a lot of hands that connect on this board, and I'm not going to have as many as the four betters, so uh, I decided to throw out $500 here, kind of just praying for him to miss somehow, and for $500, very, very small bet, he does end up making the call, so not feeling good about this one with just ace high, not a whole lot of equity here. The turn is the eight of clubs, so even worse for me. You know, now there is like, I guess, queen nines a straight, even though it doesn't make sense. There's just a lot of hands that connect with my opponent, not a lot of hands that connect on this board for me. So I check it over to him, trying to slow down, maybe just kind of giving up. And when my opponent checks it back, at least we can see a free river card, which comes a queen. Okay. This is really, really nice because now ace-king is the nuts. I have a lot more ace-kings available, and I also have an ace in my hand, so that helps in terms of having the nuts straight here. So I don't think this is a card that I'm going to be checking on and giving up on, but instead I'm going to fire out close to a pot-sized bet of $3,000, just trying to pray that my opponent doesn't have much, maybe one pair, maybe king, queen, something like that, that wants to get out of the way. But then my opponent goes all in for like $10,000. Oh man, I guess I'm running into it. Once again, to start off this session. So I'm uh, gonna fold my ace high, of course, and I will lose this one. And after this hand, uh, after the spicy hand, I actually go into two hours of straight up card death. I have to mention this because I am really proud of myself for not really punting at all after sitting there and folding for two hours after losing a massive pot to start off this session. So we're moving on about two and a half hours later into the session. Pick up sevens on the straddle, get the big blind raising into me for $120 here with a pair, medium sized pair. Can go either way, I think, with a raise or call, and I decide to be the aggressive route. I make it 500 bucks, my opponent calls, and we're gonna go to a flop of king queen four. Not the best flop for pocket sevens, I must say. Action's gonna go check, check. Turn comes a brick. Just another card that I don't really want to put more money in the middle with, so it goes check, check again. River, I honestly don't even remember at this point, but it doesn't matter, because action's gonna go check, check one more time, because I don't really wanna be value betting third pair. My opponent shows ace, 10 of clubs, and I win, so. Nice. Nice to rebound after the first hand. Nice to rebound after two hours of card death, not winning any pots. I guess I'll take down the 500 bucks here. In the next spot, we play blind versus blind. The table's getting a little short, and the blinds are now 20-40. I'm in the small blind with pocket deuces, and I actually just have to raise it up to $140 here. The big blind comes along and makes the call for 100 more, so going heads up to a flop of 8 Three deuce. That's right. That's bottom set for your boy. We've waited so long. We're about three hours into the session with not many notable hands yet, but now bottom set in a dream. I start off with a check. A little slow play to my opponent here. Eight high flops aren't necessarily very good for me, I don't think. Anyways, he does throw out a bet of $200 and we've got him right where we want him. 
I am so putting more money into the middle here. I check raised to $700, a little bit larger, about three and a half X his 200. And my opponent makes the call. That's so exciting. I finally have a good hand and I'm not bluffing and I get action. So we're off to a turn, which comes the seven of diamonds, makes the board a little bit dicey with two flush draws out there now. Anyways, I'm not slowing down. I'm going for it all. I decided to throw a bet this time of $1,800, sizing up for an all-in on the river. Especially when there's two flushers out there, you want to size up more because you want to price them out of draws and all that stuff, and you could have combo draws. Anyways, for $1,800, my opponent does make the call. So off to a river we go, which is the Jack of Diamonds. This is not necessarily the cleanest of cards that I wanted to see. You know, 10-9 gets there for a straight. The backdoor flush gets there. I can't really get called off too light by one pair anymore, like if you had a hand like ace-8 or something. Anyways, I don't think I can check this set, though. As scary of a card as it is here, I think I just have to go for it and try to hope he has two pair, like eight, seven or something like that. So I'm all in for $3,000 total, less than the size of the pot. And let's just pray he has something. We're fast forwarding the video now because my opponent goes into the tank for two straight minutes. At this point, everyone at the table is just like gotten up. You know, no one really cares about this pot and everyone's doing their own thing on their phone and stuff. So no one's paying attention anymore, but I am hoping for a call, man. This downswing has gone so bad for me recently and I just want to have have it when I'm actually all in and I finally get a chance to have him bluffing too much and he does end up making the call. Oh my goodness, this is so good for morale. Overall, I win this pot. I show my hand, he mucks, and I'm going to stack my opponent. Let's freaking go. Very hyped about this one, of course. And there's a very good rebound into the session. Three hours in, haven't played many hands, but I finally got to stack somebody. With momentum on my side, I pick up king eight of hearts in early position. There's a player who limps to my right for 40 bucks. I raise it up to $200 here and I get some action. The big blind and straddler make the call. Going multi-way, the flop comes ace, 10, five, two clubs. I don't necessarily love this spot with just king high here. So I decided to check this one back, expecting king high to be good enough, I think. When the turn is the four, both players check it over to me again, and now seeing all this passivity must take some sort of aggressive line to either just get them to fold. Uh, I bet $500, both fold. Uh, nice to win a couple hundred bucks without any sort of contention here. Moving right along with ace nine offsuit in the big blind, the small blind player raises it up to $110. He's a recreational, has been somewhat tight so far, but not too much of a sample size here. I decided to be aggressive and just isolate him to $400. And for 400, he makes the call. So we're going to play a three bet pot in position and the flop is ace 10 four rainbow. Here, my opponent checks over to me and sitting with one of the weakest aces I think I'll have here in this spot. I think it's sometimes good to check hands like these. So I check this one back. The turn is a brick, doesn't change anything, and my opponent now bets out $600. I will obviously do nothing besides call. I think raising is a little bit of an overplay. So we're going to see a river which comes a king. Now on this king, my opponent checks. And I think it seems really clear that I should be betting here for value because maybe he was bluffing with a hand like king, queen, king, jack. And now he has second pair and doesn't want a value bet, obviously. So I'm going to go for some value here with just top pair. I've played it super weird. This is one of the weirder three bet pots I've ever played, but I'm going to throw out $1,200. And he makes the call quite quickly. Doesn't make me feel really good about it when I show the ace nine. And of course, he flips over his hand. So that already means I'm losing. And he has ace jack. So out kicked here. Unfortunately, not a fun hand to lose because, you know, it seems like a relatively small pot. But I mean, my $1,200 river bet, I definitely added up and took a pretty big chunk out of my stack here. Moving right along with 9-7 of hearts in the cutoff, there's a hijack player who limps once again to my right. I decided to isolate the 200 and now the button three bets to 600. Action folds to me. I think there's a chance my opponent can be doing this a little bit lighter, you know, trying to isolate my opponent who limped. So I decided to call, play a suspect hand out of position. We're playing deep, so everything is fine. The flop comes king, queen, queen, rainbow, and action goes check, check, which I think is a little bit interesting. You don't typically see many people check back on flops like this, but when we see the turn comes the jack of hearts, bringing in my backdoor flush draw, 
Well, I could certainly bet out here now, but I do think it's a little bit suspicious. Maybe slow playing like a full house or something. Many people do that. But action is going to go check, check once again. Now the river is a three. It doesn't change anything. I kind of feel like I want to bluff at this, but having hearts in my hand isn't very good to, to bluff with. So I don't know. I decided to check. It seemed like he was maybe trapping me, but no trap because he checks this one back with pocket nines. So I'm going to lose this one, lose 600 bucks here. Not a huge hand to report, but I did think that these dynamics were a little bit interesting. Maybe I'm just in my own head about these reads of my opponents. Maybe they're just raising because they have a good hand like nines. In the following spot with ace queen of hearts, I'm on the straddle and we get some action this hand. Let me tell you, the low jack, very tight player, raises it up to $100. Small blind ends up making the call here and I already have sirens going on in my head when this low jack player raises, but I think my hand is just way too good to not re-raise. I mean, it's kind of crazy to only play a single raise pot with a hand this strong. So I make it $450. Before the low jack player, I described him as tight. I already had siren bells when he raised preflop. He raises again for $1,250. Pretty large four bet here, and he only has 5K in his stack, so he just put you know, a, a solid chunk, a big percentage of his stack into the middle, and there's not a whole lot more to play for. So I think this is really annoying, uh, mainly because... He made the sizing so big, and he's been playing basically zero hands this session, so I don't really want to give him any more money, and if I were to call here, then there's like 2,500 plus in the middle, and he only has maybe like 3, 3,500 left in the stack, so not a lot to play for. Playing out of position is really tough with a hand like this, so let me tell you, this is painful for me. I don't want to give my opponent more money. And I can't say I've ever folded the hand this strong preflop before in my life, but, you know, it's going to go into the muck in three, two, one. GG's me, I fold. I don't want to give action. I don't want to gamble, especially to players who don't play many hands and are pretty nitty. So <sighs> sometimes I can fold this. Look at me. Round of applause, everybody. I folded ace, queen of hearts, preflop. Next hand, though, we pick up ace 10 of hearts on the button, so this is really fun. There's nothing on open to $100. Two people call to me here, and I think, once again, this seems like a great spot to squeeze, so I go for it. I raise it up to 550 hoping to get this one through or at least see a flop like I wasn't able to last time, but then the same freaking guy who squeezed me out last hand, he's on the straddle, so he's cold four betting to 1350 Oh my goodness, how is this guy always waking up with the hand? It's pretty incredible. And this time it's even more believable too because, well, there's an under the gun raise and he hasn't even acted yet. Two people make the call, then I raise, then he's going to re-raise over all this action. Man, if I'm folding ace-queen here, then I'm definitely folding ace-10 to a cold four bet. So, I don't know, maybe timing is on his side. Maybe he's just owning my soul. I, I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, there's always a chance of him owning me, but I am going to throw the ace 10 of hearts into the muck once again, not fun folding good hands pre-flop. And we're going to move on to the very last hand of the night. Our buddy Mariano comes in and takes a look at our cards. We have ace queen of diamonds on the big blind. So shout out to him bringing in some run good. Maybe I can see a flop this time. This time only on player raises to 110 and I'm in the big blind and I'm going to re-raise because... That's what you do with ace-queen. It's a really good hand. <laughs> Maybe not so good against tight four bet, but here I make it 500 bucks and my opponent ends up making the call. So we get to see a flop this time and it comes king 10 seven, two diamonds and a club. Oh my goodness. Straight draw, flush draw, board that hits me more. What more can you ask for? I am going for a bet this time. This time I make it $350 hoping to get some action to be honest because this flop is so good for me anyways he does make the call and we're off to a turn which is the deuce of clubs brings in a backdoor flush draw board is pretty dynamic now with two flushers on the board and obviously king 10 high flop should be good for the three better like me so we're gonna come out blasting and i think this is a candidate to just go for the triple barrel anyways i bet 2500 and i put my opponent into the tank here i always love putting opponents in tough spots here like when you go bet really small on the flop then like over bet the turn uh, it's always a fun spot when you have a good hand to do it with and i think this one definitely falls into that category anyways my opponent ends up letting his cards go so at least we end off the session on a high note gonna hang out with 
Mariano now, you know, he came to he came to chill, catch up. I am over this session playing against people who don't play many hands. Hard to win in this game. All right, back home at last. Wrapping up the session, cashing out. This was one of the more tame sessions I think I've had in the past couple months, year or so. It seems like not a lot of ups and downs. I did try to bluff that first hand. And then I just went card dead for like two hours after and then played some hands, couldn't get much going, folded to four bets because people weren't playing many hands. And uh, yeah, I guess that's what happens when you play against uh, mainly a bunch of pros. So you got to play a little tighter, not be super aggressive and respect that they probably have good hands if they're not playing a lot of hands. Anyways, um, the day did not end out working out for me, I guess. I was in the game for $30,000, and I was out of the game for 27506 which is an L of 2500 give or take. So, you know, last three sessions of this uh, road to 1 million, not the hardest, hottest of starts, but three sessions in, minus somewhere around $22,000. $22, so got some work to do, but plenty of poker to play. And I'm not trying to win this all in one session. That's for damn sure. I tried to do that already, which is why I'm in the big hole. So yeah, long journey to go. Will I ever make it? Comment down below what you guys think, because I actually don't even know if I'm going to make it, to be honest, but we're going to try. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.